All right, another action-packed video. I know what everybody's saying, so let me jump into a few things since this channel is all over the map as it is. Even though the good thing is it, it's growing a little quicker than I expected. Uh, we're nearing 3,000 subscribers, so I don't know, either they're bored and randomly hitting subscribe, or it's a bot, or maybe something I'm saying is resonating with people. First of all, all over the map, yes. But the good news is the fact that I hit a different topic each time. If a person doesn't like said topic, I have made like five buckets of playlist. So at some point, I don't even know how it happened, got off on the Knights Templar. I made its own playlist. So if you like that, go to that one. If you don't, you can just skip it. Same thing with Christian apologetics, which I'm about to jump into in some future videos, same thing with the off the grid thing. And then the same thing with the other two dudes who are supposed to be doing this channel with me. Uh, quick update on that. Uh, you should have just seen one with Scott who has been mad prepping for his trip to the Philippines. Uh, we actually met with a guy with FEBC. We'll go into that later. Uh, it's possible it looks like that we may be going with him since Scott's moving to the Philippines to South Korea uh, to speak at a few uh, different universities on apologetics. And then actually for the first time, uh, again, for another video, actually be able to go to Mongolia. And then back to the Philippines where Scott should be at that point, already in a house, moved, everything. Uh, and then Brian should be doing a video at some point. Uh, he's, he's now got the RV picked out, and I think he put the, down, uh, the deposit on it. Anyway, I know this is quickly becoming the James channel, but uh, hey, it is what it is. I told them, I said, hey, you guys got to step it up, but we'll see what happens. All right, going into this video, this is going to be more a little bit on the off-the-grid leaving the matrix, how do you retire type topic. That's why the title of this, uh, Rending Unto Caesar, What is Caesar's? We're going to explore that just a little bit. Um, and, it's, and we're also going to kind of build on the... I did a video oh, a couple weeks ago on 500 grand is nothing, question mark. And that was due to a coworker who is about 13 years younger than me. I think that's right. And I told her, I said, look, by 45, you can easily have 500 grand stuck away and just get out of here. Just do what you want to do. And then she has got like so sucked into the matrix, the red pill, uh, sorry, the blue pill, um, that she is like immediately was like, James, that's nothing. And she's fairly conservative. Like I said in that video, uh, not flamboyish, it's not like she's driving a sports car, but I'm like, 500 grand is nothing? So basically going to look into that. Uh, but again, the point of this channel as far as leaving the matrix, and red pill versus blue pill, the whole matrix analogy, I had tried, I did a video with my nephews who are Generation Z. I thought it was a really good video. We had watched the movie Fight Club their request, the uh, movie came out in 1999. A lot of that wasn't really that much about fighting, it was more about finding your soul against consumerism, which who knew in 1999 how deep we were really gonna go down the, the rabbit hole uh, forward looking, but I mean, Fight Club pretty much nailed it. Anyway, YouTube kept kicking me off there on that video because of like some copyright things, because I showed a few clips of the video I'm gonna try it again, but I'm using a, another YouTuber's channel to just kind of highlight some of those points, but just to kind of bring you to, okay, James, what is Fight Club? What does this have to do with it? Watch this short little clip, and hopefully YouTube doesn't kick me off this time. Right now, what do you want? What do you desire? What are you doing to get these things? Think for a second now about why you want these things. Does your favorite celebrity or influencer have it? Did you see it in a commercial? Will owning this thing make people like and accept you? 
Now picture something else. Imagine one day that virtually all of the stuff you own was taken from you. Your Xbox, your wallet, your car, your furniture, your clothes, your TV. How would you react? How would you feel? For 99% of people, having basically all of your possessions taken from you might constitute rock bottom. But for the rare 1%, this might just be the most beautiful place on earth. A blessing even. Let's explore. Fight Club is a film which explores this notion of rock bottom. And a big takeaway from the film is that rock bottom is subjective. For the narrator and Tyler, rock bottom means completely different things and evokes very different emotions. For the narrator, rock bottom is a depressing and abysmal state. For Tyler, rock bottom is beautiful, liberating, and baptismal. The narrator thinks he has hit rock bottom when his condo is torched, and with it, all of his belongings. He loses everything he worked for. I had a master that was very decent, a wardrobe that was getting very respectable. I was close to being complete. Shit, man, now it's all gone. For Tyler, the narrator was already at rock bottom prior to his condo burning down, working a corporate job he hated, living pathetically in his condo, which was filled with stuff he didn't need. Explo Hopefully that video at least hit on some of those points where if you haven't seen the movie, I would highly recommend it, but you might want to, I don't know, it's one of those movies if you, like I was halfway through college when it came out, if you're way younger, you may want to look at a YouTube video like the one I just kind of shared in more depth so you can understand exactly where it's coming from. But again, brought out the old dry erase board. One thing that I kind of wanted to hit on is what he's saying at this point would apply to secular, Christian, all the above. This notion of... Uh, just buy more, pardon my language, shit, to like make you happy, it doesn't work. I mean, again, at this point, you can't really teach wisdom, the old adage says, but I mean, I can look back, you know, various schooling, living in New York City for quite a while, traveling different parts of the world, now doing this off the grid thing, I can totally resonate with the Henry David Thoreau and again, you could say, well, that's just your opinion. No, no, I think it's actually a little more than that to some degree. Materialism, whether you read, um, let's say, the, the writings of Marcus Aurelius, Meditations, it's not going to do the trick. There has to be something on the inside out, eternal, internally. So again, let me just flash this up here. I will actually, if people have interest, go into this a little bit more realistic, is blue pill realistic. Well, okay, obviously blue pill is realistic. I probably should have said red pill um, because we're all taking the blue pill. Okay, to some degree minimalism, and that basically, um, Henry David Thoreau, uh, not hot, <laughs> Henry David Thoreau once said something to the effect of the cost of anything is how much life you're willing to pay for it. It kind of goes back to that whole, hey, Will you give one of your eyes for a million dollars? A lot of people say, heck yeah, I will. Okay, will you give both eyes for 10 million? Then they say, wait, heck no. Wait a minute, I'm giving you 10 million bucks. Well, no, no, it's not worth my sight. But you're willing to give one of your eyes? So again, going back to that adage of uh, minimalism, I think whether you're secular, but especially if you're Christian, oh my gosh, you should be adopting it. You're not going to find anywhere in the Old or New Testament that endorses Tons of wealth. I mean, what did Christ say? Repeatedly, son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Uh, the, the rulers of this world lotted over you. It is not to be that way with you. Uh, uh, the title of this video, render unto Caesar. What is Caesar? We're going to get into that a little bit later. But some form of minimalism. And I'm not talking the bare necessities because this next one, uh, straddling the fence, I'm totally doing that. I mean, it's not like I'm living totally off the grid because my wife and I have a decent, I mean, it would be considered moderate, uh, 1,700 square foot house here in, I would say the city, but it's more of a town. Um, but I'm trying to basically have my cake and eat it too. And the off the grid video or the, 
the place. You've seen it. Yes, it's totally off the grid, no running water, uh, solar electricity, but it's it's pretty nice. It isn't like Henry David Thoreau's, you know, 200 foot cab, uh, square foot cabin. So I do think that you can meet these in the middle. Uh, the ones I'm really talking about are some of my friends that like, like using the words of Tyler Durden. I mean, it's just goofy. I'm like, dude, your, your house is like 3000 square feet. You're saying it's not enough. No, I need bigger. And, and one of my friends, I'm not going to name names. I mean, his house, I mean, he's no better off than me. Uh, maybe a little bit, but I mean, he's now talking about that his house is worth 500K, so he's going to try to sell it uh, with these ridiculous interest rates to get one that's 800K. I'm like, $800,000? Are you crazy? You want a million dollar house? Who are you again? So I do think there's an element of minimalism, especially if you're a Christian. I'm not, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but very rarely do I find a financially rich Christian that is not an oxymoron. There will be certain elements where, you know, like on some of the videos we've uh, looked at on the playlist, uh, fake Christianity versus authentic Christianity. And this should be taken very serious. Uh, I mean, because literally, if what Christ said is true, not everyone that, uh, that says to me, Lord, Lord, did I not do all these things in your name will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Oh my goodness. And again, what did he say? It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man than a rich man to enter heaven. People always, especially people with money, always try to twist these scriptures. Well, what he really meant was he wants you to be rich. Well, I, financially, yeah, I don't think that's what he meant. But anyway, so Caesar versus Christ. Uh, we'll go into that a little bit. One thing, and you can see on here, and then I'll sit down. I've got agorism. I've done a, several videos on that before. Again. Henry David Thoreau, think about civil disobedience here. And then lastly, I'm going to go into this savings piece, like my plan. And you guys are going to find out firsthand if it works or not, because I may be in a few years from now like, yeah, that didn't work. Don't do this. Uh, hopefully it works and it, it'll be like the Cinderella story. Um, well, that's the best analogy, but you know what I mean. Um, okay, Caesar versus Christ. Okay, am I saying anything about... James, don't pay taxes, don't do this. Of course not. I, I, like I've said in other videos, I pay more than, uh, uh, what's, the, what's that catchphrase, my fair share. Um, but the thing about this is, if you're a minimalist, especially if you're a Christian, it's an easy solve. Because if they say, hey James, fill in the blank, your taxes, which, I mean, if I do dirty math, I think I've paid like a million dollars roughly in taxes, that's quite a bit of money uh, in the course of my lifetime. And if they decide to use that for anything, abortion, if I don't agree with that, whatever, I got no say. It's a government. It's secular. Okay, I, I'm fine with that. How can I combat that and stay biblical? It's very easy. Something like agorism, which again, um, is basically simplify your life. Uh, again, I'll reference you to those videos. I'm not going to repeat everything, but it makes it pretty simple. If I said, hey, James, what do you make right now? Well, my base salary is a little over hundred grand. Um, and then the bonus on top of that, okay. Well, what if next year I start making a ton less? Well, as long as you pay that percentage, you're still rendering unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but it's going to be a ton less, James. Don't you want more material goods? See the video, Tyler Durden Fight Club. Um, I think as Christians, obviously, that's straight out of Jesus' mouth, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but also, the same token, it is easier for a rich man, or for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's not allegory. That's not... Uh, Parallel, parallelism. I mean, that's, that's pretty much literalism. And I don't think most of us, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, we know that that's not kidding around. So with that being said, yes, I understand I'm going to take, and same with Scott, same with Brian, um, a big pay cut. But you know what? That also means my taxes to Caesar are going to go way down. That's more than Henry David Thoreau. Uh, he was like starved the government by civil disobedience. Uh, that kind of goes back into the agorism element of it, where you're not breaking the law. You're just basically 
kind of riding the line. Like if I said, look, instead of making over six figures, I'm going to make like 25 grand. Well, James, your taxes are going to be tons less to us. Yeah, I know. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And, and I think that Christians, if they're really authentic, they need to kind of suck it up. And if you're, if you're a Christian, be a Christian. Again, see the video and the playlist on fake versus real Christianity. Now, lastly, that last point that we're going to find out more about, I'll probably talk about it more later. I'm hoping to have about $100,000 in the savings account, money market. You're like, $100,000. It's funny. Some people I tell that to, they're like, dude, that's a lot of money. Uh, some of my coworkers are like, dude, that's like nothing. Like the 500K is nothing uh, video and conversation I had with the girl. Uh, okay, maybe it's not. We'll find out. Goal is to have 100 grand in there, not touch it. Uh, the 72T thing that I referenced, I have about 300 grand in my 401k. There's something called a 72T, which allows you to take out X amount. No point in going into it in great detail. You can Google it. But what it basically boils down to for me is about 1500 a month, and that is pretty much for the rest of my life. Uh, based on X, Y, Z, there's a lot of stuff that could happen with the economy. Um, but that pretty much is what it boils down to if I started doing it next year at the age of 46. So, okay, you're thinking 1500 a month, James. That's, again, some people say that's, that's, a, that's a lot of money. Um, most people I work with say, James, that is nothing. Okay, first of all, what is my mortgage, my insurance, and my taxes on the 1700 square foot house I have here in town? It's roughly, because they raised the property tax again, big surprise, I think it's about 700 bucks a month. So that takes half of it right there. Okay, what is, if I go with MediShare, we'll do another video on that later, uh, health insurance, which is more catastrophic, but it's just as good as the insurance I have with uh, Walmart currently, uh, for me and my wife, it's about 300 a month. Okay, what is my auto insurance? Anyway, stop there and basically taxes, mortgage, insurance, rent, whatever you wanna call it, um, property tax, health insurance, James, it's all paid for for the rest of your life because the 72T thing will basically take care of it. Oh, that's sweet. And then once the mortgage is paid off, well, then that'll be that much more uh, to have to play with. But right now, I'm basically saying it doesn't exist. Okay, well, you, need, you still need to come up with enough money to pay your utilities, check. And James, you, you're... you're truck could blow up and then you need to like do a bunch of repairs on it check that's where the the farmer's market the garden thing that i'm working on this coffee shop uh kind of comes in can i make it work i don't know but what i'm saying is what i just spelled out to you is pretty comfortable it's own business pretty nice house plus an off the grid house that i've already walked through in other videos and it's all completely paid for through this 72T thing. And again, some people will say 300,000 in your 401k, that is so much money. Others will say, James, that is like nothing. Most people anymore say that's nothing. Uh, that's the American myth, the American dream. But I want you to think about that. And especially if you're Christian, you know, are you more allegiant to, uh, you know, are you more allegiant, is your allegiance more to Caesar or to Christ. And again, I really, not to make this off the grid video, all of a sudden a back in the playlist of fake versus real Christianity, I think that's pretty important. And I think it's a question, again, we all have to ask each other, but to tie back into what I just said on uh, consumerism, uh, and again, I've, I've lived in New York City, I work at the biggest company, uh, the corporation in the world. So I may not be an expert, but I think I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. But let's let Tyler Durden have the closing words. He points out that many modern Western consumer minded people like our narrator are unknowingly existing while at rock bottom and they've been conditioned to accept it. According to Tyler, we've been conditioned to want material things and comforts, things which Tyler correctly points out are irrelevant and even contradict our true nature. Why do guys like you and I know what a tevay is? Is this essential to our survival in the hunter-gatherer sense of the word? So this begs the question, what is our true nature? 
What do we really want and crave? What is Tyler Durden's philosophy?